I'm here with Buddy. And I call all dogs Buddy, so this is really easy for me to remember the name. All right, in this video, we're gonna go over um, how you can use a clicker to help your dog have a better focus on you. Um, now, Buddy has already been clicker trained. For those of you who don't, who have never clicker trained your dog, uh, clicker, uh, using a clicker is an example of what's called uh, classical conditioning. This is Pavlov's dog. What it means is the click or, or the, something happens and it's an indication of something afterwards that's gonna happen. So if you pick up the leash and your dog gets excited, that's an example of classical conditioning. Picking up the leash means we're about to go on a walk. So in this case, we want to create a, cl uh, a classically conditioned response. So the way we do this is we drop a treat, and every time that he licks it up, I click. This is called priming or loading the clicker. Whoops, didn't get that one. So you want to do this, if you haven't ever done clicker training, you want to drop about 10 treats like this and click every time he licks it up. The one thing you don't do is, it's not a remote control. It's just to indicate you just did exactly what I wanted now I'm gonna give you, and then a reward is gonna come as soon as I get it to you. Now, um, it's a little bit sunny out here, and so we'll probably transition so the lighting might be a little bit funky. Um, basically, um, when you're inside, your dog is a lot more focused because it doesn't have a lot of distractions. Out here, there could be birds, there could be squirrels, we have all sorts of places to smell, and uh, the front of the house has, uh, a, it's a fenced in front yard, but he kinda goes into guard dog mode. And what you're gonna see is probably the closer we get to the front of the house, the less he's gonna listen. So, buddy, come, sit, sit. So what I'm doing is I'm giving the command word when he complies, then I click to tell him that's what I wanted, and then I give him the reward, and I mark it by saying the command word. Buddy, come, come. So uh, whenever you're giving a treat, the treat goes in the mouth first, they hear the command word after. So this is pretty easy because we're far away from the street. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move a little bit closer and now he's kind of in working mode. You see he's very interested in me. So the camera's gonna go ahead and follow me. Sit. 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 What, does he have a word that like free or that means you're done? Mm -hmm. Is it free? Um, sometimes I just go like, go or. Okay. So when you, when you want to do this, you might maybe go like that and say, free. Okay. And then you just kind of ignore him when he comes back to you. We don't want to be like doing this the whole time. So there we go. So he's kind of off duty and he's walking around sniffing and, we're, and I'm just going to kind of ignore him. Now he's looking at me because we just did a lot of training and he's like, where, where am I going to get a treat? I want him to get a little distracted so that I can call him back over. Now we were in the very back of the house when we first started this video. The front is on the other side of that building. So I want him just to kind of, you know, sniff around and do it. You got... <laughs> You have a leaf? Yes, you have a leaf on your nose. Uh, now he sat, I didn't click for that because I didn't ask him for that. Now I could click for that. If I'm training a dog, I would probably click for that sort of thing. Right now, I just want him to go off duty so that we can kind of put him back on duty by asking him to come back and listen to us. There we go. Buddy! So go ahead and come with me. Buddy, come! Come. So we want to condition him to come back to us at this place. Now, right now there's a car out there. Buddy, come. Come. His natural inclination is to go out there because mm -hmm. he thinks he's the guard dog. So what I'm doing is I want to practice having him come back here when there's nothing out there. Now there was a car out there and that's what he went and looked at, but if the car was leaving, so he was able to go away. So again, he's kind of, if you see him, and I'll kind of move over here so we'll have a little bit more of an angle of me and him. You can kind of stay uh, a little bit behind me so we're gonna kind of shoot both of us at the same time. So he's not aroused. Buddy, come. Come. So the idea with this, we have a dog that doesn't listen to us. We often wait until they're getting a very distracted environment and then we expect them to perform. We have to help him practice this sort of thing. So he's checking in to see, is, am I gonna get a treat? All right, so he heard something. Buddy, come. Come. So he really likes the clicker. The clicker kind of tells him we're now working. So what I do is I have the treats ready and I'm just gonna kind of walk over here a little bit. Just gonna pretend like I'm not really interested in anything. And I want him to kind of get distracted and move out there. Now, even if nobody's out here, this would be a good time to have him practice just coming from there to wherever you're at, the door. So right now, he's, there's no reason for him not to want to come. Buddy, come. 
come. And then he gets to go and do kind of his own thing. So what I'd like you to do is come out here. We're doing a lot of recalls. We can also sit. Sit. Sitting is a more subordinate position for dogs. It's hard to look really authoritative when you're sitting down. So now we have some people that are walking out there. Normally he'd be barking at those people, mm -hmm. right? So he's kind of in, he's not, he's not, buddy, come. Come. So we're kind of conditioning him. He goes like, I can go yell at them. That doesn't really benefit me. But David is giving me all these great treats. And I hear the click, so I know it's going. So I, I want to wait for, I don't want to wait for him to get too aroused. Buddy, come. Now, if I say it multiple times, then that's going to confuse him that I can listen to David whenever I want. So this is an example of we need to practice this a little bit more. There's a couple people on the street, but it's not really bad. Um, he's just sniffing on the corner. Buddy! Now he's sniffing. It's hard to compete with the dog's nose. So what I'd like you to do, although inside he's very obedient, outside, he right now he's just distracted. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to try to compete with his nose, but I would like when I call him, buddy, come. Come. To get that sort of response all the time. And the way we get that is by waiting for the nothing to be going on and practicing it with easier situations. Then you do it when your neighbor maybe is across the street. So they're in the front yard, he sees them. It's not as hard as somebody's walking right here in front. And you gradually kind of work your way up until we get to the point where we can ask him to come. And he comes pretty consistently. Buddy, come. Come. And again, the clicker, you probably don't need to use a clicker for him, but I think it just kind of puts him in a working dog mode. Sit. Sit. Down. 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 So I wanted, he didn't have his chest all the way down. So I'm going to ask for pretty extensive or a pretty uh, strict adherence to what I want. Now I call it crash when my dog lays down. When he does kind of like a little bit of this, this is what I call side saddle. It's harder for him to get up. So it puts him in a little bit, bit of a disadvantage. I also like to do another one where I call it flop. Let's see if I can get him a flop. I have to switch hands. You don't want to lay down for this one, huh? There we go. So I'm trying to get him to shrug his shoulder a little bit. Flop. So flop means to lay on your side. And then for my dogs, this, it's hard to do on concrete. But for my dogs, when they're lying on the back, I call that pancake. So again, I like these fun command words. So teaching him to come out here and sit and lie down when people are out there, He's less on duty. And I think that's his problem is he thinks he's on duty. So uh, we want to practice calling him away. So the more that you practice calling away when nobody's there, the more likely he will be when people are there. But you have to, again, set him up for success. So we exercise him first. Then basically, then we come out here and we practice just recall when nobody's there. Then you practice recalls when somebody is maybe in their house across the street and one house down. So, and they're not doing anything too crazy. And you just do like five or 10 of these coming back. So maybe he comes back to here or to your back door or all the way in the back. And then gradually to the point where he comes faster and faster. Uh, and then at that point when he comes consistently every time, then maybe the neighbor directly across the street when they're outside. Maybe you ask them, hey, can you just kind of stand outside and just kind of flip the lid of your trash can up and down? Just a benign sound that's going to capture his attention, but he doesn't think he's on guard duty. And then eventually you want to do this where uh, you have uh, kids that are uh, maybe coming home from school. Now, in that case, you might want to use, I thought I saw an old divider. And so you might use a divider here to practice having come from here to there, and he can't get to the front of the house. And then eventually move the divider on the other side of the carport, and then a little bit further, and then to the edge of the porch. And so we get him conditioned back and forth until eventually you just say, come, he comes running at you right away. Now, I mentioned earlier to the Guardian something called a treater train. Um, this is de it's developed by uh, a behaviorist named, who's passed away. Her name is Dr. Sophia Yin. So there we go. So he's interested in just kind of checking things out. We have some sounds out there, but he's not really paying attention to them. He's sniffing. I'm going to wait for him to snuff sniffing. And look, buddy, come. Buddy. Come. Come. Now, I did say it a couple times there, and I stopped my foot, not to say I'm mad, but to try to get him to look at me. So the more that, like I said, we practice, the better he's going to come. 
All right, so let's go ahead and go back here. Buddy, come. So the next thing I'd like you to do is we need to give Buddy more exercise. He is a high, high energy dog. So the, Dr. Sophia Yen came up with something called a treat and train. It's a machine that's about this big and it allows you to deliver treats with a remote control. So what I'd like the Guardian to do is maybe set it up here and then the Guardian is gonna be back where we started the video, way over there. And we're gonna do this when nobody's there. And again, you might have to put the barricade so he doesn't go up there. Buddy, come. Come. You see how quickly he's responding. Now, the closer we get to the stimulus, the harder it's gonna be. So what I wanna do is we just, uh, for him, he needs more exercise. We don't have stairs, which I love to use. So what you do is you set the machine up. There we go. Is that your neighbor? Buddy! Buddy, come! Buddy! So right now he's overly aroused. Yeah. And he thinks he's guard dog. Buddy! So if I call him a lot, then that kind of is conditioning him not to come. And you see the neighbor is walking around. Now, buddy! Now I asked for a sit there because I want him to be a little bit more subordinate and then I'm going to kind of redirect him this way and walk him away. Um, but again, that's why you might want to have that partition, the baby gate or, or you know, that, or whatever the gate is to prevent him from doing that. The, another trainer that the guardian worked with suggested that, which is good because every time he goes and practices and that person leaves, he thinks he made them do it. So what we want to do is just condition him. Eventually you can use the treat and train where you can maybe have uh, you know, yourself, you're standing out there, and we have a treat and train back here, or different parts. But we want to just have him practice running towards us, and eventually the beep on the treat and train is going to be similar to this. Come. So that way, that click, now that's really not an ideal way to do it, but if he's in a lot mild uh, level of uh, over excitement and you say, you just come. I wouldn't want to do that too much. I would do that sparingly. If he's really excited, he's not going to hear it. So really the basis of this, um, ask him to sit and lay down are good, but we want to just have him practice coming back to you or running away from the fence as often as you can. Now the last little addendum that we could do for this, if you're going to enlist the help of a friend, you can have a friend that's uh, walking across the street and just talk to him, put your earpiece in so you can be talking to him on the phone. And just anytime that, that buddy starts not listening to you, tell them to stop and turn and put their back to Buddy. So you're just gonna face this way and stop. And if he really is, is really worked up, they could either crouch down or they could move further away from him, maybe around the car so he can't see them. But the idea is if you have a friend, you're controlling your friend and you can tell your friend when to move and when to not move. We wanna have provide enough stimulus so that Buddy is interested in them, but not so much stimulus that he's not gonna to listen to us. And gradually at first, maybe they're just walking back and forth and, and then you say, Buddy, come. Come. So that wasn't ideal again, but the, the, the click does seem to get his attention. Don't do that too much though, because you'll ruin the, re, the, the use for it. Buddy, come. So at first you're just going to have your friend just walking this way across the street, just back and forth very slowly, and you're going to practice having Buddy come all the way back maybe to here where your basketball court is, and then eventually they're going to start moving a little bit faster. And you know it's it's wide enough for him to see, and eventually you'll have them like running or skipping, but they're at the same distance. Then eventually, after Buddy can come under any speed, then you have them move one or two steps closer, and then have them repeat. So they gradually get closer and closer until eventually they're walking in front of your house on the sidewalk, and Buddy is conditioned that even though people are there, if I run away from them, I get a treat and a reward. So that'll help with a lot of the problems that you're having, combined with the other thing I mentioned is the maintenance inside. So what I want you to do is the first three or four panes of the window that faces the front of the house, I want you to get white paper, cut it out exactly this shape, put it here, 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 in that window that faces the front of the house. Because every time the, somebody walks by and Buddy barks at them, he thinks his bark made that person leave. But in reality, that person was walking past anyways. But the, see, since he sees them leave, he thinks he gets, that's a validation for him. So he goes and barks, but he can't see the person leave. After a while, he's gonna stop barking because he doesn't know if it works or not. And if we combine that with teaching him to move away from the door outside, we're going to have a good response. Buddy, come.
come. This is Buddy, and these are some tips and tricks on how you can use a little clicker train to condition your dog to move away from the fence instead of barking at people who pass by.